Now that we've covered the basics in pressure and flow, let's dig into the more F1 relevant part of aerodynamics, how to control a wild and unwieldy airflow. Let's jump straight back to where we left off in the last video then, looking at our side profile of a wing with all the air flowing around it. So neat. It isn't always so neat though, and we'll get to that. But first of all, let's quickly work out why the air underneath the wing follows the surface at all. You see, if you imagine these layers of air rushing towards the wing all straight like this, the natural tendency for this air is to keep going in the direction it was. The underneath air will keep going straight, and this deflected air will keep going down, though the fast moving under layers of air should absorb this. So why does it in reality follow the surface of the wing? Because if there's no or very little air here, then it means this is a very low pressure area. And as we discussed previously, high pressure air will flow into areas of low pressure. So all this high pressure, high energy air is naturally going to bend into this pocket. Hi, I'm just gonna stop the video here for a second and make a clarification on the last video. In that video, I said that the air under the wing moved faster because it was being accelerated by being squeezed. Um, that's not the whole truth. And the majority of the acceleration actually comes from the air being pulled into that low pressure area. So sorry if I misrepresented what was happening there. Okay, back to the video. There's a second smaller effect going on here too. And that's the friction between each layer of air. It begins right at the surface of the wing where the first layer of air particles actually doesn't really move at all because it's stuck to the wing by molecular forces. Each layer of air is attracted to each other. Between the basic static layer of air and the full speed layer of air here, each layer is moving a little bit faster due to the friction between each individual layer of air. This section is called the boundary layer. The amount of attraction or friction between layers of flow is called viscosity. The viscosity is one component of overall aerodynamic drag because the surface of the wing or car is tugging on the airflow, slowing it down, which means that in turn, the airflow is tugging on the surface, slowing it down. Right, so we now know why airflow follows the form of a surface. Now I'm going to show you when it doesn't. Last video, I tipped the wing up like this, increasing its angle of attack, and all the air followed it diligently. This will give you more downforce, I said. But actually, tipping the wing up this high may well ruin everything and give you even less downforce. You see, if air is going fast enough, the momentum of the air may overpower the pull of the low pressure area here, and instead the air will mostly just plow on, being deflected only slightly towards the wing. This is called airflow separation, or detachment. It should be clear that with the airflow separated, the average direction of the airflow after passing around the wings is less upward than if it all stayed together. This means that a separated airflow gives you less downforce than an attached airflow. Between these two flows of air, the air in between doesn't really know what to do with itself. The boundary layer will get sucked away from the surface and then get all garbled trying to resolve the pressure differences. This is called turbulence, and you may hear it referred to as turbulent flow, with the nice smooth airflow being called laminar flow, laminar just meaning layered. Right around the point where the airflow separates, the amount of downforce the wing delivers will drop massively, though the drag continues to increase. This is called a stall. So how do we resolve the problem of separated airflows ruining our nice efficient downforce? Well, we could just not tilt the wing so aggressively, but that's giving up. We need to find a way to keep this fast flowing energetic air attached to the surface for longer. And the answer is vortices. A vortex is just a spiral of air spinning like a screw along the airflow. So if we can imagine getting a vortex of air to flow between the attached boundary layer and high energy separated airflow, you can see how it can start bringing them together. Pulling the high energy detached air into the boundary layer and allowing it to stay attached for longer while smoothing out the disturbance between the boundary layer and the separated flow. So in short, a vortex can help keep airflow attached to the surface it's flowing around. This doesn't just apply to the wing, but applies to the entire chassis too. Consider the car as a whole. We've got a number of places we want high energy, fast flowing air to go. The air intakes and the huge downforce generating rear wing, for example. But before the air can get to those places, it has to navigate the body of the car. And we don't want a separation in airflow to accidentally send a bunch of weak turbulent air into the rear wing or into the air intakes. Instead, we can use vortex generators to keep the airflow attached to the chassis and minimize the turbulent low energy flow. A further downside to air separation is that it causes drag. Imagine the car pushing through the fast flowing air. If the air separated dramatically behind it, this leaves a huge hole in the air of the car's wake, a massive low pressure area behind the car. Now with a high pressure area in front of the car and a low pressure area behind it, this causes a net force to act backwards on the car, dragging it back, reducing its speed. 
You can also think of the low pressure area creating a suction, if that's easier. It's the same thing, if maybe slightly more clumsy way of putting it. Generating some vortices helps to attach scattered airflows to the body surfaces and reduces turbulence in the car's wake, which will reduce drag on the car. And I've been showing you a car side on, but this works in all dimensions. A lot of work is put into keeping the air attached right along the side of the car too, to stop the air doing this and to make sure it does this. In fact, one of the major jobs of the front wing, and the reason it always looks so complex, is to build huge vortices to help the airflow down the side of the car, and to stop it getting mucked up by the mayhem caused to the air by the spinning tyres. All of the details and intricately sculpted tips of a front wing are designed in age of vortex generation, that will help persuade the air and its flow all the way down the car. If we can take just one element to look at it, we can see how vortices are generated. So above the wing we've got our high pressure air, and below the wing we've got our low pressure air. Now as we know, the high pressure air will try and flow into the low pressure air to resolve the difference, and it doesn't have to wait until after the air has passed over the wing to do it. At the edge of the wing here, the top flowing air will try and curl over the wing and get to the bottom flowing low pressure air. From here we can see how a corkscrew movement starts at the wing tip and will continue down the chassis. All of these wingtip shapes will work together to create a really huge vortex that doesn't just help keep the good airflow follow the shape of the chassis, it also helps keep the bad airflow, the disturbed turbulent air in the wake of the spinning tyres, away from the bodywork to stop it ruining everything. These vortices are the bouncers of an F1 car, telling the drunk tyre airflow to keep on moving sir, keep on moving. So that's the basics of how you control airflow and coax it into it doing exactly what you want it to do. The next video will be a bit of a free-for-all on the little aero bits like what does this thing do, why are there holes here, what's a barge board, that kind of thing. Thanks for watching this video, it was quite short and cheerful, but I really wanted to get into the heart of what vortices were as they're discussed so much in aerodynamic chat. Uh, next week I'll probably do the last part of this short aerodynamic series, but continue to do videos that touch on aerodynamics in future. Um, thanks so much to everyone who continues to support me doing these videos, I've managed to not have to leave an extended gap, which is great. And the next video in this series should be out next week. 